Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar. We do apologize for the delay earlier, and we will be recording this webinar to send out to anybody that may have missed the earlier time. Today's topic is on WorkMax mobile time tracking with presenter David Moyer from About Time. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is in listen-only mode, so if you have questions, please type them into the questions box on the screen, and we will address them at the end of the session. Again, this webinar will be recorded, and we will email out a copy to everyone later today. I will now turn it over to you, David. Thank you, Krista. So thank you for taking the time to attend the WorkMax webinar. Let's jump right in. Uh, questions are, what is WorkMax? Well, we designed a simple yet powerful mobile resource management. Our goal is to maximize utilization in real time for your labor, tracking, assets or equipments, tools, electronic forms, even some customer service uh, scheduling and dispatching. We built this for your business. We tried to make the design as intuitive as possible. We spent 120 days uh, in design of just the screens and usability before we even wrote one line of code behind this. And ultimately, the vote will be yours as to whether or not we accomplished our task of making this intuitive. This is a web-based platform. Uh, no server installations necessary. We also made this, like I said, very intuitive and easy to use so that the implementation is rapid. We want to make sure that you're maximizing your ROI and getting it as quickly as possible. There are multiple modules in here, very configurable. And even though it's very simple, uh, the power is in the configuration as well. Licensing is extremely flexible as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. And we did make this to go across industries. Uh, terminology inside the software is changeable uh, and uh, can be modified to uh, use the same terminology that you use in your business. Our goal, we know that you guys have scattered people, things, and information. There are more mobile employees out there than ever. And so our goal is to actually take all that disparate information, that disconnected data from a mobile standpoint, and actually connect that. So WorkMax, we're calling this a platform. It's WorkMax the platform. And our goal is to have one vendor, one login, one database of all those mobile uh, modules and that mobile information out there. The modules that are available to you in WorkMax are time, assets, which tracks assets, equipments, equipment tools. We also have a forms module. There's a little service dispatch module. And there's an insight module as well. We're going to be focusing mainly on the time and a little bit of the forms today. All of those modules together, we call that the complete suite. We said that the licensing was flexible inside of here. It is. You do not have to have all of the modules. Matter of fact, some of your employees may say, we don't need assets or tool tracking. We don't need service. Maybe all we need is time, forms, and insight. It's completely up to you how you license those, and you can mix and match the different numbers of those. WorkMax does work on any device, anytime, anywhere, uh, any web browser, as long as you have a connection, can get into what I call the control center. You'll hear me call, uh, use a term called the control center. This is where we manage our data. The mobile applications themselves uh, can run on any Android or iOS device out there. So when we enter data into the system, you can enter it through the web or the control center. So data can be entered there as long as you have a web connection. We do have mobile devices out there and applications specifically for those mobile devices. The reason why that's important to have those separate mobile devices is because have no signal on those, it's not a problem for us at all. Matter of fact, we can collect data even if you do not have a signal on the mobile device. And when you do get to a place where there is connection, you can synchronize that information up. And we know that in the construction industry, there's places in buildings down uh, that, that have no signals. We know that there's places out in the country, and we're, we're, we're getting better and better, but there are places you still need to have to uh, collect that information and so forth. When you do manage your data, you will manage that through the control center, uh, through a web browser. And by the way, you can even use a web browser on your tablets as well. We've tested it on this thing, so you can manage your data. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can manage that information in, in the control center. So let's talk a little bit about time, and let's 
uh, maybe put a couple little focus points on that. First of all, every time we do a timestamp, we'll show you this, uh, where we clock in, we change tasks, there's always a GPS location stamp on uh, each of those uh, stamps, okay? Also, there's an option that as your employees are clocking in, that it will actually take a photo of them at the same time just to authenticate that that's in fact who they are. We have very configurable pay groups, overtime rules, shift rules. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. We have full time zone support. This may not affect some of you or all of you, but the fact is, is that uh, we have uh, people that work across time zones. They'll clock in on one time zone, clock in out on another time zone, and uh, most systems will either give them an extra hour time or one less. We actually take that all into consideration because we do everything with GMT time. So you'll never have a problem if you have people working across time zones. We give you multiple ways to collect time. And I think this is important because every business has different ways to collect time. Matter of fact, even different ways to collect time uh, amongst groups of people. And we're going to show you those multiple workflows. Uh, very important to you, I'm sure, is the fact that this will integrate with your payroll. Uh, Sage 100, Sage 300, those products out there, we have integrations directly with those. So the time that we're collecting inside of here, we can put right into 300 and 100. As far as assets, actually, let's, uh, let's jump past the assets and go into the forms because I wanted to focus on the forms more than anything here. Uh, let's talk about the forms. First of all, uh, user-defined, easy-to-create forms inside of this thing. Uh, we have the ability to do some very intelligent things with triggers and conditional forms. We have uh, calculations on the forms for you as well, signature captures. We also let you have unlimited forms. We don't, we don't limit you to how many you can uh, create or submit inside the system. Uh, once again, even the, on the form capability on the mobile devices, you can collect all the forms, fill them all out, and, and uh, even if, when there's not a connection. Uh, we let you collect rich media information on those forms, so you can collect pictures, you can annotate, uh, a lot of good information like that. So let's jump into the product. We'll start with time, and then we'll go into the forms just a little bit in there as well. This is the WorkMax screen that you'd log into. You'll see the modules across the top. Uh, time, equipment, forms, service, insight. Like I said, we're going to focus on the time and maybe a little bit of the forms as well. There's a lot of configuration inside of this, but I'm just going to jump in here. We'll talk about the configuration maybe in a uh, more detailed webinar at a later time, but I want to make sure that we're conscious of time here and, make, and, and get through this. This is what's called time editor. Any time that's entered into our system shows up into this little grid. This grid is user definable. Those columns are user definable. Anytime I want, I can sort these. I can by timestamps. Every one of these columns is completely sortable. And uh, you, every grid that you'll see inside of here, it's very simple. Even though it's a web application, it's very sortable, very, very easy to find information. At any time, we can go over here and we can filter this out and say we only want to look at a certain employee's time, maybe a different pay group, maybe a different job cost code, whatever it might be. Very easy to sort, to get information out, and find exactly what you're looking for. So what I want to do first of all is I'm going to start by what we call real time. There's really three workflows of entering time that I want to focus on. And so I'm going to start with, with, with uh, what's called real time. And to do that, I'm going to pull up my mobile device at this point. And so I'll, come, I'll, I'll pull this up with a little screen sharing application. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to resize this just slightly because on some of these presentations, it cuts off the bottom. So I'm going to do that. So I just resize my screen right there. This is the mobile application. Anybody who wants to get into the mobile application just has to have a PIN code. Everybody gets a PIN code, and that PIN code could be anything from, from uh, four digits up to uh, ten digits. It's up to you how you do that, whether it's the last four of the Social Security number, whatever it is, you, can ha you get to control what that is. I'm going to go ahead and use my PIN code. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And at this point, I have all of these options showing on my screen. If I did not have those, if I did not have rights to that, and you have complete control as to who gets to see what on their devices, even who gets to see what in the control center, let them log in and they only maybe only see a time clock option out there. If I've only been given rights to see 
uh, real-time clock in, I would only see that first option out here. But because I'm an administrator, I get to see everything here. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to do time clock. I'm going to hit the time clock on, on the uh, iPad, and I'm going to say, I'm going to go inside of here, and I've got other employees. I can either clock in other employees if I wanted to. I won't clock them in. I'm just going to clock myself in. I may have a crew or a group up there. I can have that as well. At this point, just to kind of give you an idea of this, I'm only going to self in, so I've highlighted my name. I'm going to select the in button down at the bottom of the screen. When I select the in button, it comes up and says, tell me what cost codes you're going to be working on. Now, remember that the jobs and the cost codes are coming directly from 100 or 300, so you're not having to manually re-enter those in, in here. I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to say I'm starting with drywall. It comes up with a little confirmation screen. It says, you're on Lone Peak Renovation. You're uh, working on drywall. Is that correct? It is. And so I'm going to hit my confirm button at this point. It's now going to take that timestamp and it's going to synchronize that across the web. So if I come back over here and I look at WorkMax, you'll see that I, I had three timestamps when I started, but now I have a fourth one. You'll see that on that fourth timestamp, it says that this is David Moyer. And you'll look at this and see it's Lone Peak Re Renovation. Just like we said, we started on drywall. It says at 10, 11 a.m., my time in this time zone, I clocked in. Now you notice that there's no time out. And the reason why is I'm still working on that. Over on the left hand side, there's a couple little tags over here that give me an indicator as to what's going on with that time record. The little red flag says, this is an incomplete entry. Okay, and as long as that, I'm still working on that and I haven't put an out stamp on that, that little red flag will stay on there. The other thing is that this little device says that this was a field record update. And that little world over there says that there's a GPS stamp on here as well. Anytime I want, I can see exactly what that is. I'll hit the little GPS stamp down here. I'll come down here, and you can actually see that, in fact, that's exactly where I clocked in at About Time Technologies in my office. So all of that information happens very, very quickly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out to my iPad, and we'll pull this back up. And I'm going to switch my tasks. So here's coming in the morning. I say I'm starting on drywall. Now all of a sudden, I, it, it may be an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, however time, whatever time frame it is. You come into the time clock again, and we're going to go say I'm going to go ahead and clock in, and I'm going to change task, and I'm going to go to painting. Now as soon as I do that, comes up to the confirmation screen. We go in here, we confirm that. That information now get synchronized back up to the web. So when I come back over here and I look at this on the time, you'll see over here underneath this that there will be two records in here. Now there's some interesting visual cues on these records so you can always look at this and see. You notice that first record inside of here that was Lone Peak Renovation, drywall at 1011, it shows me clocked out now at 1013. I worked on that for about three minutes, even though in the background it says 1011 and 1013, it's, uh, it's actually, there is three, uh, the, the time records in the back will show you there's three minutes on this anyway, or 0 0.03 minutes, there we go. All right, so anyway, you'll notice that this is also highlighted in yellow or, or a highlight, meaning that this, you did not clock out of that manually, that the system automatically generated that out stamp. So as soon as you clock into another time stamp over here, which is this one, it automatically now clock you out of the other one because you don't want overlapping time. So the system automatically knows it puts that out stamp inside of there. Okay. Once again, this second one over here, you can see that there's a little red flag that says now that's an incomplete entry. So at any time I want, I can come back in here and say I need to switch another task. So I could go back out to my mobile device and say I'm going to go ahead and do another task. Or I may just say I'm done for the day. So I'm going to hit my out stamp at this point. I'm going to con hit confirm. And now I've got this thing automatically uh, synchronizing back up into the web. And so when I come back over here, you'll see that I have two timestamps out here. You'll see that one comes up and says this one is, there's no more incomplete entries in here. Each one of these is now complete. This one is completely unhighlighted. And the reason why is I manually did an out stamp. Had I clocked into another task, it would have automatically clocked me out of this one. You would have seen two yellow lines. So once again, the concept of this is real-time clock in, change tasks or cost codes during the day. I may have three or four different cost codes I work on in the day. At the end of the day, when I clock out, all my time 
is automatically divided up and ready to go into job costing. So it's already divided up in there. So that's one way to do time capture on this thing. So that's one way of capturing real time in, real time on each cost code, at the end of the day, clock out. Now we also know that some companies out there say, we want people to clock in and clock out. Clock in in the beginning of the day, clock out at the end of the day, but I don't want them, they're up on the roof, they're up doing uh, things that, that are, are really hard for them to pull out their, their you know, iPads or phones or whatever it might be and change tasks during the day. So I want them to clock in in the morning and clock out at night, but I want to take their time and divide it up later. So you'll notice up here, I had three time records when I opened up Time, Re time Editor. You'll see that I've got uh, Paul's, I've got Pete, and I've got Russell. And they clocked in on the same job, all this stuff. But notice they have different clock-in times. So if you look at this, you've got 644, uh, 642, 639. Uh, all of these have different time, time uh, ranges inside of that. But I know that they didn't work on drywall all day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these. And I'm going to do what's called allocate these. Now it gives me a graphical view here of all their different times. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to divide that time up during the day. So I'm gonna hit my new button and I'm gonna say from 6.39 to 9 a.m. They actually worked, they actually did work on drywall. So I'm gonna go up here and say they worked on drywall and they did about 1200 square feet of uh, drywall, okay? When I save this, and by the way, if you did have the assets, tools, equipment, and you wanted to uh, clock into a piece of equipment at the same time, I can do that. These other billing codes and shift levels, these are user-definable codes that you can use or not use. If you don't use them, they won't show up here at all. But I could select a piece of equipment, but we're not gonna focus on that. So at this point, I'm gonna hit save. And what it's gonna do, oh, segment, hang on here. Let's go back here and make sure that that's 1 p.m. Or let's go in here and say 9 a.m. I changed that. Go ahead and save that. You can now see that I went from 6.39 to 9 a.m. down here, and you can see that it gives me a graph of representation. Now, also notice that it started at 6.39, and even though Pete and Paul did not start at 9.39, it did not change their timestamps in, because that's not when they started. So it starts as soon as they can and puts it to 9 o'clock. Now, if I look at that and go, hey, that really should have been something else later, I can just take and drag and drop this, and when I move that, it actually changes the time down below as well. Now, I'm going to take the next segment inside of here and say from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., they did something else. They went in here, and they changed over, and they did some painting, and they did 800 square feet of that. Now, what's happening on this thing, when I'm collecting uh, not only time but production units on this thing, I'm now getting my in instant productivities on this thing. Because I can take from 100 and 300 and say, here's what my budgeted units are. Here's what my budgeted hours are. I know what my productivity should be right out of the blocks. And so now what we're doing is we're going to compare this to real time. As we're collecting time, we can say, here's my time. Here's my units. Now I know my instant productivity, and I know exactly how I'm comparing to my budgets. Now we're going to finish this thing up and say, create one more inside of here and say from 2 o'clock to uh, 349, they finished up and they did tile, okay? You guys are all talented, so they move around a little bit. They're pretty diversified in what they can do, so we hit the save button on that. We go ahead and save this, and now instead of having two records down there, or, or th one record for Russ, Pete, and Paul, it now has them all divided up inside of those things extreme, exactly the way that you want. On the left-hand side, once again, we have a visual cue. That little icon over there says that this was an allocated entry. So once again, the concept of this is, the first one was real-time clock in and clock out. Start in the morning, change cost codes, change cost codes, cost codes clock out at night. This one is, I clock in in the morning because I'm going to pay them when they start. They clock out at the end of the day. A supervisor comes in and says, now let me divide up their time. Now it's all ready to go into job costing as well. Okay, so two ways right there. Now I'm going to take you to a third way. A third way is we have people that say, I want to do time entry at the end of the day or even at the end of a week. And so we're going to go back out to the mobile device and we're going to show you 
what we call our digital timesheet. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select timesheet, not time clock this time, timesheet. Okay, I am going to use some other employees, so I'm going to take Bill, Clark, and Don. And I'm going to go inside of here and say, hit my next button. And we'll say that this is going to be a week, the week of uh, June 20th. So we'll just put a little label on this thing. We'll say June 20th. Okay? And I'll change that back to say this is going to be June 20th. So we'll say this is going to be the first day I'm going to do it. And I can select however many days you want. Do you want to go 14 days? Do you want to go five days? And I'm going to do this thing for a week, so I'll leave that at five. And I'll say that we're going to go at 8 a.m. You can change your start times. You can do anything you want. I'm going to go in here and say I'm going to change that to nine hours. And what's the default cost code? Well, we kind of like that drywall, so we'll start everybody on drywall. So I've set all the parameters up for this thing. And now I have to do is say create timesheet. I hit the create timesheet. And now I've got all of those three employees ready to put their time in for the week. So I go down in here and I say, OK, everything in the green at the top of the screen is everything that applies down. So I know that in, in Bill, Clark, and Don, that their time is going to be uh, uh, allotted to Lone Peak re renovation, and it's going to be drywall. OK, that's great. But they didn't do that all week. Matter of fact, on Tuesday, what I want to do is I want to change that drywall to, to, to painting. So I'm going to hit that little drywall with my finger, and I'm going to go back out here and select a different cost code. So I'm going to hit painting. So when I do that, you'll see that now everything in that green will apply to every employee down below. And you say, OK, that's great. But what if I have some deviation on my employees on an individual basis? So Clark, by chance, on Wednesday didn't just work nine hours. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to change that and say he worked 12 hours. Now, he didn't just work on Lone Peak, and he didn't work on drywall. He did something else. So that little arrow next to that, I'm going to select the arrow next to the 12 and Clark, and I'm going to say, what did he do? I'm going to change the little hour from 12 to 9. And down here on the bottom of the screen now, it comes up and says, I need to redistribute this. Now, up in the, uh, up in the green, you'll always see that it tells you what the total hours you have and how many are unallocated. It will not let you out of the screen unless you allocate all those hours. So I'm going to hit the little plus button down here. And I'm going to say that he actually worked on Costco Warehouse. And when I do that, it says, did he do anything else differently? Well, maybe he even switched off of drywall or, and he did something else. So we'll go back and we'll put him and say that half of his, or three of the, that, those three hours were for, at the Costco warehouse and he was doing painting. Now, when I'm done with that, I hit the Save button. And what you'll see is you'll see some color coding come up on your digital timesheet. You'll see that on Lone Peak Re Renovation up here on Wednesday, there's a little one next to it, which means that in the employees down below, there's a deviation on Lone Peak and there's a deviation on drywall. And if you look down here, you'll see that there's a two right next to Clark says both of them are with him. And so I can do that with as many employees as I want. Now, at the end of the week, I want to make sure that Bill, Clark, and Don are good with their time. So I sit there and say, OK, you guys good with your time? Great. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to have each one of them sign off on their time. OK? And I'm just signing with my finger at this point. When Bill signs off, you know, it's a little check mark goes next to Bill's name. And I'm going to go back over here and say, OK, Clark, you sign off on yours. Clark signs off on his. We accept that. I can go back over here and say, OK, Don, you good with yours? Yep, let's, Don's good with his. Don signs off on his time. We accept that. And now we got little check marks saying that each employee has approved their time. Now, me as a, as a manager, I need to sign off as well. So I'm going to hit the little tags over. I'm going to check those little boxes there. And a manager sign off option comes down on the bottom. I come over here. So I got a manager sign off. I go in here. I sign that off. I accept it. Now I've got a double check mark in there. I'm going to save my timesheet. And when I go back out here, I'm going to go ahead and synchronize. Now, I just did a different way of synchronizing time. What this does, this is what's called a full sync. Anytime something happens inside the control center that needs to be pushed out to the device, this is a way to get it out immediately. I can synchronize. So it's going to take information here, information uh, back on the device, and it's going to exchange all that information. But based upon what I just did now, I've got time sitting out here. And you can see that instead of having uh, you know, different time out here, I can see that I've got all of this time from that digital timesheet all distributed out there. So there's three different ways of doing time. I've got real time. 
clock in during the day, clock out at night. I've got clock in in the morning, clock out at night, allocate the time, or I've got digital time where I can actually take and put this information in there. So very, very powerful uh, capabilities. Now, to take this time and, and use it, what we want to do is, and, and I said in the introduction that we have very configurable overtime rules, and uh, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick um, a couple employees, and I'm going to kind of show you some of the things we can do. So I got some various ways. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to pick a biweekly pay period. I can have multiple pay periods in here if I want to. So some employees in here may be weekly, some be monthly. I'm going to go in here and say I'm going to pick biweekly, and I'm going to say I want to go to this pay period right there. So I want to pick any record that comes inside of there. So you can see I got Dawn and I got Bill. Now, interesting, I, before I, I select these employees, I want you to understand that each Bill and Dawn actually have different overtime rules attached to them because maybe they're different unions. Maybe they're, you know, maybe there's something special about them. I don't know. Uh, one of them, I don't, Don, I, Don or John, also has an auto lunch calculation. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to hit this little thing called batch mode. When I batch these records, I go over here and this just says we're ready to start making these things available for overtime. Now, immediately, each of these guys really had 45 hours, but you'll notice that Don only has 42 and a half. And the reason why is because on Don's records, I said to do auto lunch. And matter of fact, I can even say if it's at the end of the day, or I can say it's time specified. And in this particular situation, I said it's time specified. And so you'll see inside of these things, you'll see June, this one, he's got some, uh, some 8 to 11.30. He had a time stamp inside of here, three and a half hours. And then I told to take 30 minutes out, and now he goes from 12 to 5. So each one of those now is broken up, so he's, autom he's got that time in there. Whereas Bill Johnson, I didn't do auto lunch, so he's got nine hours. So he gets paid for his lunch. Unfortunately, Don doesn't. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to say, go ahead and run the overtime, and we're going to see exactly what happens. Because now that, that auto lunch, we've got to take this overtime records, and we've got to make those available, or, or we've got to, to look at each one of those records based upon what they have. So now what it'll do is it'll actually refresh this and go through it. And, and matter of fact, we can go through this whole thing. Oh, great. It's, I've got a... Uh, my apologies, something not working on my, my overtime on that one. So that didn't work out well. Sorry, guys. Uh, but these should actually run the overtime inside of these things and give me the overtime factors for these things. I'm going to have to go back and look at what happened on that. I may have an employee uh, pay group set up improperly. Okay. Uh, each one of these employees, though, can, you can have it over eight in a day. You can have it over 40 in a week, whatever it might be. And once you've got your overtime, then we send those over to uh, 100 or 300 to do that. Now, once we've got these employees out there, anytime I want, I can go into this thing called Employee Insight, and I can see exactly where every single one of my employees works. So I click on this thing, and I can see exactly who did what. So I can see that Paul Johnson actually worked at Riverton Hospital. He actually worked on drywall, tile, and painting. So this is going to give me a, a listing of everything that happened within the last 24 hours. So I can look at this and say, well, where did Clark work? Well, he actually worked down at this job right here, and I can see exactly what he did. He did drywall and painting. So at any time I can see exactly what's going on to my different jobs as well. So all of my different locations and jobs are sitting out here as well. So if I want to look at that, I can see how many employees clocked in on the last 24 hours, what equipment happened, is my budget okay so far? And this budget is not necessarily dollars, but it's based upon units and production. And all that information is automatically logged into the system so you can see that. So time itself, once again, multiple ways to do workflow. We've got different pay groups, different uh, calculations for shifts, different things like that. Now, really quickly, I know we have 15 minutes on this thing. I don't want to leave time for, oh, for questions. I want to jump into the forms module here just slightly. This is a user-defined forms module. And by the way, the form module itself can be tied to a time record. When I clock into a particular job or a location, I can say, I always want this form to be filled out. When I clock out, I can have the same thing happen as well. I want to show you a very simple form, and I want to show you how this looks on a mobile device as well. So I'm going to go down here and say, <clears throat> here's my uh, a simple safety form. 
This is something that I have them do every morning when they come in. You can have this happen if you want to. I can go in here and say, what project is this for? We're going to say this is for Lone Peak Renovation. I can say, here's today's date. The forms tools itself allows me to do some intelligence. Will you be attending the safety meeting today? If I say yes, fantastic. Everything works great. If I say no meeting, no problem at all. If I say no, I will be not attending the safety meeting today. I'll come inside of here and it says, hey, I need to have more information on that. So we have intelligence in here that based upon one question, it may ask you additional information. If I come back in here and say, yes, I will be attending that, that's great. Is there anything, any reason you cannot perform your job effectively today? Yes, there is. What is it? Injury, illness, alcohol, and medication, whatever it might be that you've got in here. Uh, here's all my pieces of equipment I have. I've got my steel toe boots. I'm going to sign off on this thing. And if you wanted to, you can actually put uh, you know, information on this thing. You can choose files in here. We'll go down here and say I'm going to pull documents, and we'll go down here, and I've got some files down inside of here. So we'll pull something inside of here and say we've got a picture of a beehive or whatever it might be. Now, once I'm done with that, I can either submit this or I can save this as a draft. Okay. Now, just to keep this particular screen up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my form on the mobile device because once I create the form inside of this, there's no extra work to get that on the mobile device. This automatically knows how to go resize this properly and put it on the mobile device, whether it's, an, it's a phone, whether it's a tablet, it does not matter. Okay, I'm going to resize this just a little bit one more time just to make it down so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to pin back in, and I'm going to go down here to Forms. I'm going to hit my Forms button. And what it does is it says, I have no forms that I've actually filled in at this point, so I'm going to create a, I'm going to fill in a brand new form. So I hit the plus button down on the bottom of my screen, and it's going to pull up a list of all the forms. And I can see down there on the bottom, I've got this one called Safety Form. I'm going to pull that one up. Now, there's a little bit of information here. Over on the left-hand side, if you looked at this on this particular screen, you'll see that there's ability to put a description. There's also this little thing called Relationships or Associations. And so on that mobile device, it's the same thing. If I pull that back up, I have the description where I can come up here and say, I want to put a description in here. And this is my mobile form. And I can even submit that as a draft as well. Just the same way I can submit it on the, on the control center, I can submit it as a draft. Those relationships that you see here, this relationship right here, if I select that with my finger, it comes down and says, hey, is there a, you know, what employee, what job, what cost code is this thing for? I'll just leave it as the same. If you just go right into this form and say, I want to start filling it out, you, you can hit the form fields right away and just start filling it out. You don't have to set any of those other things up over there. But what I'm going to do now is if you notice this, and I'll pull this just over slightly, you'll notice that the questions that are on my form on my mobile device are exactly the same questions that are over in the control center. So once I say make this available out to my mobile device, it will only show, it'll show up out here with no extra work. So I'm going to go in here, enter the same information. Will you be attending the safety meeting today? If I say yes, no problem. If I say nope, it comes up and says, well, then I need some information on that. And this is where you can come in and use your voice to text. This is voice to text, and I'm going to fill it in via voice to text. So once you're done with that, you go ahead and save that. You don't have to type things in. You can do voice to text. Is there any reason you can't effectively perform your job today? Yes, there is. What is it? And you just select your options inside of this thing as well. Hard hat, all this information. I can come in here, and I can say, let's sign us off. I can accept that. And here's what's really nice about pictures on the mobile device, because at this point, I'm going to go here, and it says, please take photos. Now, if you're documenting something on your job, you may go out in here and say, I want to do before and after pictures. This is where you would do it. I select to take the photo inside of here. I can go in here, and I can put, you can see little icons down at the bottom of this thing. I can do voice recordings at this point. So this is just media. This is what we talked about on the rich media. I can do voice recordings. I can do photographs. If I hit the photographs, I have an option of either using right off of my film, right off of my uh, camera. So if I wanted to, I can come in here and say, pick this picture. I'm going to actually use that picture if I wanted to. Or I can even go in here and say, I want to take a brand new picture by hitting the plus button. When I hit the plus button, I can sit there and say, let's take this picture. And I'll say, use this, this photograph. Now, what's nice about this, too, is I can now go in here and I can 
annotate this. So let's say that I want to make some markups on this thing. I hit the little pencil next to that screen. And when I do that, I can pick a color if I want to. And I can say, hey, this area right here needs to be patched. I can put anything I want on that. So I can save that now. Down on the bottom, I'll go ahead and save that. Down on the bottom, I can actually look at this thing. I may want to put some more annotation or text down here if I wanted to. I may even want to do a video recording and document something using a video recording. Maybe there's a safety violation or maybe we've got some something going on and I want to video this thing. I can do that. Or if I just want to use a little sketch option inside of here, this is just a straight sketch, sketch option where I can come in here and say, hey, I need to document something on here. So I go in here and say, here's this right here. I've got this area right here. There's water. Whatever it might be I want to put inside of that. Once you save that and go back out to your form, you've got that. It's now all saved into your form. You've got three entries in here. So I'm going to save that. And any time, now it's going to come back and just go into that list. Any time I want right now, I can go back in and I can modify that form if I want to. As soon as I synchronize that back up to the control center, I can no longer modify that out here. But what I can do with this now is if I'm out there and I have a customer who says, I want you to go ahead and, and can you give me a copy of that right now? I can highlight that and I can hit the little icon down on the bottom. There's a little mail icon. You can see that. And if I select that mail icon, what it does is it will actually create a PDF version of that. And it will, uh, it'll put, yeah, so it will create a PDF version of that. And now I can email that directly to whomever needs to have it right at that point. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put that out there right at this point because I am going to synchronize this back up to the web. So now there's a little synchronize button down on the bottom. So I can hit the sync button, and it's going to send that information back up into the web. And when I'm done with that, I'll go back over here, just synchronize, synchronize that back up. I'll go to the completed tab. We'll leave this page right here, and you will go out, and you'll see that that particular form is generated out here on the control center. There it is right there. It tells me it came from mobile form. There's your David's iPad, different things like that. So you can come down here and see all the information, even all the photos, the markups, all that information collected right in your form. All that information is transferable. I can have that automatically routed if anything happens. Uh, you know, I can have that routed to whoever needs to, to, to get that information. One quick other thing on the forms. I want to take you in and show you maybe just a little bit more sophisticated form. I have one here called my clock out form. I can put inside of here, here's my today's date. We'll go ahead and fill this out really quickly. Did you take all your breaks today? This is one of the things I, that, that I have my employees fill out at the end of the day. Did you take all your breaks today? No, I didn't. Well, then I want to know why, because that's a liability to me. Yes, I did. Did you safety violations today? Yes, I did. I want to know what they are. Well, maybe I didn't. No. Were you injured on the job today? What's probably the next logical thing we want if they say yes? click, it says, then here's your injury form. I want you to fill it out. So instead of having to wait now for injury forms or any other form that needs to be filled out, you can have triggered forms that say, hey, based upon the response to a question, I may have additional forms. It may be an inspection to say, hey, uh, is there something wrong with your piece of equipment? If it says yes, great, pull up the form that says, I want you to do an inspection form and tell me exactly what's wrong with that. So all of that information, of course, then gets flows, flows back into the, into the control center. I can enter that information from a mobile device, all of that in there. Now, once you do create one of those forms, anytime you do that, that form is easy to find. It's very easy to find forms inside the system because all of this information, once again, is sortable by your, your different criteria inside of here. So all your forms are here. I can go inside of here and say, I need to find a safety form. I can, I can sort these, or I may even come up here and say, you know what, I want to find all of my Stevens Construction forms. I can come down here and say, let's go down here to Stevens Construction. That's the only ones I want to see out there. I may only want to see those that are part of a certain job. So I may only go out here and say, I only want the ones attached to Lone Peak Renovation. And now I found that one form. I can click on that. And I can see, okay, here's the information on this thing. Here's the subcontractors that were on site, the vendors, delivery, visitors, what the weather data was for that day, different information like that. So that's all your forms. Each one of those things is associated. Anytime I go out to a particular location, you'll see those as well. All of my job listings sitting over here. Uh, so if I go into a particular job, I can see 
all of my completed forms inside of those jobs by just hitting the completed forms. It'll find every form that was filled out for that particular location and show them in here. So those forms are very, very simple and easy to find. So we've covered off a lot of territory. Uh, we covered off time. We've covered off our insights. We've covered off uh, uh, a little bit of forms and so forth. So I think at this point, what I wanted to do is maybe open it up and see if there's any questions. Okay, if you do have a question, please type it into the questions box and we'll be happy to answer. Okay, we have a question. Does the timekeeping system do wage equalization? Uh, wage equalization as far as, I, I maybe a little bit more explanation on what wage equalization means. Because okay, we do a we'll lot back. of wage changes and things like that. I just wonder maybe if we could have a, maybe a little better explanation. Okay, we'll come back to that if they want to type that in. Um, do jobs also sync with stage 300? Yes, 300 or 100. This is a full full synchronization with 300 or 100 and 100. How often do cost codes get updated? Cost codes are monitored in the system, so we we map with 300 and 100. One to be a technical and not be technical, there is an API with 100, so we're constantly monitoring that. So if a cost code is available inside of 100, it, it lets us know that it's available over here. So it's, it's, uh, we just we specify that we want that to be available over here. So it's not anything that's a, a manual entry over here. Same thing with 300. We map right straight to the ODBC tables. And so we're monitoring the jobs, the employees, and the uh, cost codes over there. And so when, they're, when you enter a new one, it's available for us over here right away. Okay. You have. Does each device that is going to enter time have to be registered in advance? Yes. Yes, and it's it's uh, it does need to be registered in advance. It's it's a very easy process though. It's not not tough at all. Matter of fact, it can be. Uh, on the settings themselves, there's a little option in here that says I need to set up a device. You set up a device and send that information out to that particular uh, employee. They enter that information into that device and activate that device. It's, uh, we did that on purpose for liability purposes. So we, we, we don't want to have people just have the ability just at, at a whim to be able to set that up. We want to have the control back in the office. But I can literally set up a brand new device on here, send the information out to the field and have that, that device up and running in, in a matter of uh, two minutes. Okay, next question is, how does this sync into payroll in Sage? Okay, so on once again, on, on uh, 100, it's an API, so it goes right straight through the API. On 300, we produce uh, the C, uh, CSV or text file uh, directly coordinated with your uh, enter time schema because you know in, in 300 you have to set up your enter time and we just map it right straight directly to that we pull the time right in there we just so just so people on this call know we have been integrating with 100 and 300 for about 10 years now we've gotten hundreds of customers out there doing it with our uh, enterprise application. This one, we we're using the same technology. We're I think integration with 100 and 300 is probably one of our secret sauces per se, if I can use that term. We're, we we know what we're doing and we do it well. Okay, can you run a report on a specific category or individual? Yes, anytime you want, you can run a report. Uh, all the reports give you multiple criteria. Say I want to do something specifically by a job, by a category, by a uh, 
uh, cost code by a you know by date range whatever it is I can very easily isolate that information down okay do you know if the time can be exported to a third-party payroll service yes it can we have our matter of fact just to go back on the hundred and uh, three hundred comment uh, comment about integration we have integrations with over a hundred different systems out there from ADP to, to paychecks to whatever it is we can we can send this out into any format that you need it okay can we add cost codes if needed yes you can add cost codes so if you and that's a good question if you want to uh, have cost codes that are coming right from 100 and 300 but you want to add additional ones that are only available out here absolutely can and and that does not uh, change the integrity of the integration between the 100 and 300 and this with those other cost codes it still keeps a relationship there but you can add additional ones over here if necessary okay can we add change orders uh, change orders uh, if you want to oh so so let me make an assumption that you want to uh, maybe use an extra in 300 and you want to have that extra and you want to start putting cost uh, time against that we actually give you the ability to do parent jobs and children jobs so if you wanted to actually create a a sub job or an extra or whatever it is that you want we facilitate all that information in there so if you want to enter a change order enter a change order inside of here and have it uh, roll up okay if you have the estimating module can the estimate be exported directly to this module no the, 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 the estimating module itself is going to have hours in production and as long as you're saying send that over into uh, 100 or 300 that's where you're going to integrate that okay so 103 then we would pick up that information from 100 and 300 that came from the estimating module but the integration is more for uh, to to the uh, job costing module in 300 and 100 we're just pulling those units from the uh, the accounting system After it does sync into stage 300, can the person performing payroll edit the time, job, and cost code just like we can do now? Yeah, absolutely. Wage equalization is a higher rate paid for a job depending on that union the employee is in versus which union area they are working in. Okay, I, I, I thought that's what it was, but I just wanted to get clarify, clarification. We have the ability to have there's there's a hierarchy of how we pay people on here and it's actually very very powerful a matter of fact if I if I I, I may pull up a, a screen really quickly here just to show you and I know that this is uh, this is is probably what you want to look at at this point matter of fact I'll pull this up and we'll just delete these lines right here so the way that we do pay codes and these are pay rates so we're, remember we're not doing rates we're having to let those calculations happen over 100 and 300 but at any time we can look at pay codes and we can assign them at a cost code level so that if you have something that's deviated outside if there's a cost code that says hey as long as they're working on this particular cost code right here that it's going to pull a separate pay code out if it doesn't find anything there it goes down to the employee level if it doesn't find anything there it goes to the job and so if you want to set up all your pay codes down to job levels or to union levels or even just at the company levels we give you the ability to go out there and set it anywhere they want so that pay equalization handled it very 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 nicely in our system okay um, next question is can we do rounding to the quarter hour for payroll absolutely every we we do time rounding in this thing and you can round it to 5 10 15 20 we we give you a lot of different options for time rounding but absolutely okay and the last question is do you have a few minutes to go over the equipment i i can if you guys want to stay on for a couple minutes i can go through the equipment a little bit in here 
So the equipment module itself is really a database of information in here. There's three things we can do with those. And like I said, we can pull those assets or equipment right in from the equipment management module. This is a database of information. It's not, you know, we're keeping a lot of information on this thing. This information, uh, we can do, like I said, we can do three things. We can, uh, we can clock into a piece of equipment at the same time we're clocking in time, okay? So when I have time, I can also clock into that. Employee says, I'm gonna operate this. I can clock into that time. That way you get accurate billing on this thing if you wanna actually do it that way and get also job costing on that. The other thing we can do is we can just assign equipment to a particular job. If I do sign equipment to a job, it's very simple. I come down here and I'm an equipment manager. I say I wanna assign a piece of equipment to a job. I can pick the piece of equipment or multiple pieces of equipment if I want to and say, I'm gonna take this electric compressor, that's great, I'm gonna take that one, and I'm going to assign that to what job it is going to go to. We'll say it's gonna to go to this job right here, we'll say it's gonna go at uh, 2 p.m. today, and I can at the same time assign that to an employee if I want to. Now, one of the things you can do in here as well is you can do parent-child in here. So, for instance, if you have a toolbox, every time you have an employee that starts up and you say, here's your toolbox, put it in the back of your truck, it's got a DeWalt drill, it's got this, it's got this, it's got this, it's got 10 things on there. If I assign that one piece of equipment, which is, uh, you know, or, or the, the toolbox, it'll assign all those pieces of, uh, of uh, tools underneath that as well. So when I go ahead and I save that, now I've got that all assigned out here. I gotta select a, a oh, can't assign it to the same employee, or select an employee. Let's go ahead and say we're gonna go to Bill Johnson, we'll save it for him. Okay, so now I've got this out here. You can see that that's where it is. It shows up in there. now. I can also just go and sign that straight to an employee. When I do that, I can. Th what it's gonna do is it's gonna track. Now remember, this is only tracking where it's assigned to. We're not doing RFID or anything at this point. In the future, we will. What's nice is anytime I want, I can look at my tools, I can look at my, my uh, you know, pieces of equipment, whatever it might be, and I can see that. I can click on that, and I can see exactly which job it's on. It's right there. And I can see things like, I'll be able to see in this one, I don't have, I've got it assigned to Greg Siebold on this one, but I've got inside of here, had I, had I had it on here for a period of time, I could put hours on this thing, how long it's been assigned to this job. What's also nice about this too on the equipment side is if I go into here and say, you know what, I need to find a quick loader. And so what I can do at this point is I can say, hey, where's the loader? Do I, I, I'm gonna just type it in and it'll actually find exactly where it is. And it says, hey, they're both up at Lone Peak Renovation. I can look at this and call the project manager and say, hey, I, you, you guys are the closest job to me. I don't wanna have to go back to the yard. Any chance I can pick that up and use it for a couple of hours on my job. So yeah, and so then I can, so this keeps track of who's got what and, and so forth. Now on the mobile device, what the mobile device does is I have a transfer tool on this thing. So let's say that uh, I'm going to transfer to Joe a, uh, a DeWalt drill, or I'm gonna sign this out, I'm gonna go out there and say, hey, I'm gonna give you this piece of equipment. On Joe's device, he's gonna get a little notification. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sign this to you. Joe's got it on his. He has to accept that on his device that it's now assigned to him. And so well, as soon as that happens, it, the, the assignment happens in the control center on the web and it automatically uh, shows that he's now responsible for that. We, and the reason why this is important right at this point is uh, we know that the number one cost of most projects is labor, the number two cost is probably equipment. And so we also know that there's a lot of money going into replacement equipment. So we're just trying to protect that asset for you as well. <clears throat> So it's a simple simple module, simple tool, but very, very uh, distinct in its functionality and uh, <clears throat> it's, it's meant just to protect your assets. So hopefully that helps. Okay, we have one more question. How does the system track travel time between jobs? <clears throat> Most of the time what we have with travel time is we actually put that in as a cost code. So that's one cost code that you would have inside of here. And you either can have that cost code as a, as, a, as a travel cost code over in 100 or 300 and have them clock into that, or that may be an additional cost code that you set up over inside of here. So completely up to you how you do it. But a lot of people, they just clock in. When they actually get on the road, they clock into travel. And when they get to the next job, they clock into something else. They clock into the next task.
Okay, it looks like that's all the questions we have. If you do decide you have more questions, we'll be happy to answer them. I'm going to send out the recording to everybody um, later today, and all our contact information will be on there. So we'd like to thank you again for attending today's session, and have a great day, everyone.